In this episode, I'm going to be looking at the new DxO Pure Raw version 2, which is an update from their original Pure Raw. And this is a noise removal software purely for raw files. I'm just going to demonstrate here quickly the differences between a RAW and a JPEG file. And for this shot, I've shot with a Panasonic GH5, and which is a micro four thirds camera, a very small sensor compared to a full frame sensor. Um, it's shot with a 12 to 60 millimeter zoom lens with an ISO of 4000. And this is the JPEG version of it, showing that the, the camera's automatically applied sharpening, it's automatically applied noise reduction, it's got a fairly clean output but it's also smoothed out a lot of detail on there. So if I go straight into the raw file now, um, this has not had any alterations at all. This is just pure raw file straight out the camera. Nothing's been done to it. As you'll see, it, it looks quite noisy. Well, it looks very noisy, in fact. Um, it's probably unacceptable, but we've got a lot of detail actually still captured in the top of this wooden surface here. Now, if we go on to the software which we're going to be reviewing now. This is the DxO Photo Raw version 2. We can see that not only is it smoothed out all the noise from there, it's also applied a certain amount of sharpening and we still maintained a high degree of detail on there. So now let's have a look at the Photo Raw software itself. Today DxO have announced a new Pure Raw version 2. This is a raw file processing or raw file pre-processing application that will optimize your images ready for you to edit them in either Lightroom, Photoshop, uh, Capture One or DxO Photo Raw 5. The interface is very simple but don't be fooled by the simplicity of the interface underneath the bonnet there's some very complex algorithms in progress and it will actually accommodate up to 70,000 different camera lens combinations. I'll show you more how this works. Um, we have three options here. We can either add files of process or we can drag and drop a raw file or we can download some sample raw files. So I'm going to add some raw files to process here. So we just click on this icon and this will take you into your explorer and we'll click on the first image and the last image to select them all and we'll add the photos into there. And here we have a series of thumbnails. Now we can either process the whole lot as a batch or we can select the ones we want to process. Um, to deselect them all, we just click on the top button here and that deselects them. And now we can select whichever image we want to process. So I'm just going to choose one image here. And this was shot on a Panasonic GH5, which is a micro four thirds camera. Uh, micro four thirds cameras are not renowned for their ability to shoot in low light, high ISOs. Um, this is primarily due to the small sensor size. Um, so we're going to process this one and see what happens here. We click on process photos and we get a very simple menu structure coming up here. Um, the raw processing, processing, we have a method which is high quality prime or deep prime. Um, deep prime is set by default and this will give you the maximum amount of quality, but it also may take slightly longer to process, but the quality will be the maximum available from your digital file. We also have a series of optical corrections. It will apply some global lens sharpening and lens distortion correction. Now these are a bit these corrections will be based on the database of over 70,000 lens and camera combinations and the Panasonic is included in that as will be most modern day cameras as well. And the global lens sharpening applies sharpening to the picture. Unfortunately at this stage we don't have any option of sharpening the photograph manually it's done for us but it has been very well thought out and quite frankly the algorithms they use are excellent. Our output format we can either have JPEG or DNG digital negative. Um, I would suggest put on the digital negative and by default that actually does come up and this will tell you exactly what the export size will be 57 megabytes to 92.6 megabytes. That's quite a large file. Once the image is processed a DxO folder will be created in the original image folder. 
this will store all the files that have been processed on there or you can select to choose a custom folder so once you've selected all these selections here we'll just click on process and this will take about 15 seconds to process you can see the bar going on the bottom there um, this is actually in real time I've not speeded up anything on here it is actually working in real time and once it's completed you get an option to do now you can either go to Explorer you can view the result results or we can export it to and we can choose Photoshop Lightroom or you can select your custom software like Capture One or DxO Photo Raw 5. Um, I'll cancel that and I'll want to compare the process results. So we can just right click on the image and compare. And here we are. You can see that the, there has been some optical correction happening there. Now if I zoom in on this you can see exactly how much correction has been applied and here we can see a lot of noise on there but if we move the slider over and this is how DxO has actually corrected that. Now with a Panasonic GH5 micro four thirds this is incredible detail on there. So we can close that down now and we can look at another file now. I know I've got one here this was shot at 25,000 ISO. So let's click on that one. We'll unselect that one and we'll process this photograph as well. Um, by default now we'll see that the last settings will be applied the Deep Prime, the DNG and also the DxO folder and we'll process this one. And this time we'll just view the results straight away. And if you look here, we can see how noisy this original file was. This is no corrections applied whatsoever. And also, if we look at the image, we can see the curvature here, the lens distortion. This pure raw will actually correct any distortion. So if I move the slider over, you can see how it's straightened up the line there. And if we zoom in on this, we can also see how much detail has been recovered on there. Now this will not this will only work with raw files. You can't actually process the JPEG files with this. Now although this software does actually handle high ISO files extremely well and as I've just shown you the Panasonic one there. Um, when you apply this pure raw to low um, ISO files like for instance this one here this was 320 ISO. Let's deselect this one and we'll process this one here and process photo. Again we're going to choose this DNG. So one of the problems I found with this when shooting with low ISO and maybe also with the high ISO pictures was that the, the sharpening that is applied tends to be a little bit excessive. Um, if we look at here the, the the detail on this branch here. Once we've applied the pure raw process we can see that it's a, the sharpness is possibly a little bit too excessive for what I'd like and um, this is where I would have liked to have the option to turn down the sharpness at the pre-processing stage. But all in all it actually produces some excellent results and I also compared results that are achieved from this pure raw 2 to the with Photo Raw, which also has a deep prime, and in actual fact, the Pure Raw 2 does a better job than the than the DxO Photo Raw 5. DxO Pure Raw 2 is priced at 115 pounds, or if you're upgrading from a previous version, it's 69 pounds. And I'd say it is a very good buy, and um, but it is for pre-processing your files prior to bringing them into Photoshop, Lightroom, Capture One, Photo Raw, etc.